Hello, I'm Jamie O'Brien from the Archdiocese of Perth reporting for Shalom World. Thank you very much for being with us here today. We're reporting live from the Australian Catholic Youth Festival here in Perth and today we're speaking with Father Rob Galea from the Diocese of Sandhurst. Thanks very much Father Rob for being with us here today. How have you found this first uh, few moments of the, uh, of the festival? Well, first of all, it's a real pleasure to be here. I feel honoured, privileged to, to be in this room, but also to be at ACYF. It's always such a joy to see people so excited, so alive, and so uh, on fire for Jesus. This morning, we led the, um, the morning session, and there were 6,000 or so young people. But just observing from the stage, just seeing the enthusiasm, the joy, the excitement, for people from around Australia gathering together to celebrate their faith, their love for Jesus. Uh, I'm, honestly, my heart is on fire, on fire, and I cannot wait. This is just the beginning. I cannot wait to see what God is going to do um, throughout the next few days. What is it, do you think, that young people are looking for uh, in the event of a festival like this, particularly from a faith uh, experience, from a, a form formative experience? Well, I think one of the things they want is something um, faith presented to them in a relevant way, faith that they, um, they can swallow in a sense. Um, I think our young people are, are hungry. They're desperate for the Word of God. They're desperate for um, a, a deeper understanding of the heart of God. And when they come to a place like this, they can receive that. Um, and, and they can grow in that. So I think that's one of the things that it's growth in faith because I think one of the things is that we can become stagnant, too easily become stagnant in, in our own homes um, and in our own places where we go and work day in and day out. So that's one thing. Um, but also uh, the sense of community. I think that it just, it's so tangible, so evident when you see people just coming together and saying, wow, you love Jesus as well. I love Jesus. You know, while you have, you're the only young person in your parish. I'm the only young person in my parish. And, and so they just come together, they're encouraged and they're enthused and quickened to go out and then um, set their parishes on fire. You're a musician and a priest. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're also uh, uh, a young man. How do you connect all of those elements of your life together? The pastoral ministry, the music mm -hmm. ministry, the work that you do with young people. Uh, it's an amazing experience. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, I'd say this. Look, first and foremost, I am a Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus. This is the most important thing. So everything centers, everything I do centers around that. I love Jesus. I'm in love with God and I want to share that with other people. Now, um, I'm in a ministry of priesthood and I love that I'm, I'm honored and humbled that I get to serve God through the ministerial priesthood. But part of my priesthood is to proclaim Jesus in word and in sacrament. And I think this is where music fits in. Music is about proclaiming Jesus through the Word of God and no better way than to speak through the language of the heart, which is music. So I don't see my, the fact that I play music, the fact that I make films, the fact that I am um, a vlogger, the fact that I do all of this. This is not separate from the priesthood. I'm not a priest by day and a musician by night. It all fits in together because that is my vocation to proclaim Jesus. And I will use any means possible, be it social media, be it film, be it music, any means possible to proclaim Jesus through the word and then also through sacrament, which I get to do in my parish, which I get to do with young people, which I get to do um, uh, with people, um, the people of God within a church setting. You were speaking about social media. Mm -hmm. How do you think that young people need to uh, be aware of what's going on in social media today, particularly for young Catholics that are growing up in today's society and looking for uh, a faith formation experience? Well, I'd say two things. First of all, don't be afraid of social media. I think the worst thing we can do is go and approach social media with fear 
and we think, oh, it's evil, <laughs> and there's too much bad there. No, it, it, you go and brighten it up. You go and bring Jesus to the social media. Be loud in your faith. Be loud in the way you encourage people. Be loud in the way you love people. Be loud in your positivity as well uh, in the world. The world needs it and is desperate for it. You see, it's a massive, the world is on social media. Jesus needs to be in the world. Jesus needs to be on social media. And he, he's not going to be there by his own profile. We need to be there. But two, the second thing is what, your, what, what you feed yourself. Okay, because uh, you are what you eat. So watch your internal climate. Watch who you're following. Watch what you're listening to. Watch what you're watching. Because if, you, if, if you're feeding yourself the wrong thing, then you're going to bring out the wrong thing. So make sure that what you, who you're following is positive, is proclaiming Jesus as well. Those people you're following um, have a positive influence over your spirit. Watch your internal climate. The message of uh, this ACYF is listen to what the spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. Can you enlighten us a bit about what that means for you? Well, I'd say this, that the Holy Spirit is not a, um, a, a sort of an energy or, or something abstract. The Holy Spirit is a person, okay? So I think, uh, and, and not only think, I know that the Holy Spirit, God, is speaking to us. But God doesn't only speak through a force or through um, something extraordinary. God speaks to us through each other. God speaks to us through the silence when we sit down and we listen to God. God speaks to us through the poor, through the broken, through our family, through our friends. Now the thing is God is speaking but the problem is we're too busy very often to listen. So it's about stopping and taking this moment of retreat even at ACYF and listening to what the Spirit is saying here and now but also training ourselves to listen to the Spirit once we leave this place. I'm going to listen to the Spirit through the poor, through the broken, through Jesus on the cross. And this is the, the, our responsibility. We are not meant to live this, this life without listening to the Spirit of God. It's too tiring, it's too exhausting, it's too disempowering to live this life without the voice of God guiding us. God promised to be with us. But the thing is, we're so busy on our social media, we're so busy uh, on our phones and so busy being busy that we stop and we realize we spent our whole life not listening to God. And so this is what this is uh, about. It's about listening to the Spirit of God that is speaking, but we just need to stop and listen. Your message is one that's very rich and very encouraging for young people today, uh, particularly in today's world where there's a lot of young people that are poor, that are broken. Uh, mental health issues uh, are mm -hmm. experienced by a significant number of young people in today's world. Tell us a bit about your experience of how you've come to have a faith that is enriched, um, that is alive, um, that yeah. is willing to give to others. Well, I'd say this, that in order to follow Jesus, in order to encourage others, you don't have to have your life together. Okay, you, it's a, a myth to think that saints had their lives together. They didn't. And uh, this is the, the beauty of the way God called messed up people. He called St. Peter. He called St. Paul. They were messed up. And you think that after he called them that their lives were perfect. Far from it. And this is what God calls us. He calls us in our huma humanity. He calls us in our excellence. But he also calls us in our brokenness. And I recognize my brokenness. I'm a priest, I'm an ordained priest, but that, that, when, the, when the bishop laid his hands over me, I didn't become perfect at that moment. I became a, a broken person who was ready to serve God in my brokenness. And I recognize this, and I live this. I have my, uh, my whole past with, with uh, depression and anxiety. And during my ordination, God chose maybe not to heal me from that. I still struggle from depression, anxiety. But it doesn't stop me from my ministry. It doesn't stop me from serving. It only helps me recognize how much more I am in need of God and how much more I am in need of my brother and my sister, not to be above them, but to walk with them in my brokenness and in their brokenness. And it is us together as community, as broken people together, that we can reach towards a God who is whole, who is holy. Father Rob, thanks very much for being with us here today. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank you. I look forward to it.